This is Sandvik, the expert in rock drilling tools used in challenging environments in the mining and construction industries. Used and maintained correctly, our new RH460 family of DTH hammers will be a cost-effective and reliable partner for customers all over the world. RH460 is a high-performance family of DTH hammers designed to be used in almost all ground conditions and in all DTH drilling applications. The RH460 hammer has relatively few parts and is easy to service and maintain. This film shows you how. The service needs of the RH460 depend on how and where it's used. Regular servicing will ensure trouble-free operation. Sufficient lubrication during operation is critical in order to prevent damage and failure. It is extremely important for the hammer to receive a constant supply of good quality lubricating oil. The function of the oil is to provide an air seal and to reduce friction and wear. The rate of lubrication is a function of hammer air consumption. Most environments encountered while drilling are considered to be corrosive to a greater or lesser degree. Corrosion can cause pitting, scoring and other types of notch damage and lead to cracks. Minimize corrosion by using correct lubrication and thread grease. The RH460 should be inspected after the first eight hours of operation. The next inspection intervals are then every 100 hours when drilling in hard and abrasive or wet and muddy conditions. When drilling in dry conditions, the service interval can be increased to 200 hours. If the hammer is used with water or foam injection or in wet holes, clean and lubricate it after each use. Correct tools and equipment are essential this is what you need to service the RH460 hammer. Make sure you have proper breakout equipment, an approved solvent or chemical cleaner, a honing tool or an emery flap wheel, a selection of drifts, a copper, brass or dead blow hammer, vernier calipers, circlip pliers, rock drill oil and thread lubricant. It is important to read through the safety instructions in the operator's manual before you start disassembling the hammer. One way to break the threads is while the hammer is still attached to the drill rig. Another way is to use a breakout bench provided by several manufacturers on the market. It is important to use the correct gripping area on the piston case when breaking the threads. The operator's manual for the RH460 shows you where. Start by unscrewing the driver sub and bit. Remove the O-ring that holds together the two halves of the bit retainer ring. Put it in a safe place. Remove the driver sub from the bit. Remove the top sub in the same way as the driver sub. Remove the makeup ring and the check valve dart. Use a soft drift on the piston striking face to free the inner cylinder. And the piston.
remove the air distributor from the inner cylinder. Remove the guide sleeve that is held in place by two O-rings. If a honing tool is needed to repair the piston case, first remove the piston retaining ring. Use circlip pliers. During an inspection, keep the operator's manual close at hand. It contains all the essential wear limit information. Clean all the parts and prepare them for inspection. The driver sub should be replaced if the threads are damaged. Also discard the driver sub if the dimensions are not within the specified limits. Check that the internal and external diameter of the piston case is within the specified limits, otherwise it'll need to be replaced. This also applies if there's any internal damage, such as scratches, nicks or burrs, which could damage the piston. Such damages can often be repaired with an emery flap wheel. Inspect the top sub. Discard it if the outside diameter of the top sub is below the specified wear limit. Or if the wrench flat or shoulder is worn to the point where shouldering of the mating thread is not possible. Also discard it if the threads are damaged. At the piston, look for any evidence that the hammer has been run without proper lubrication or been contaminated with grit. Look for signs of galling or overheating. Remove any nicks, burrs or sharp edges. Do not use a machine-driven grinding tool except to remove any pitting and cavitation from the striking face of the piston. Don't remove more than half a millimeter from the face of the piston. The chamfer must also be regenerated on the corner of the central bore or premature foot valve failure may result. When inspecting the outside of the inner cylinder, focus on both end areas. That also applies for the inside. Be sure to check also the deeper parts of the bearing area. If the sealing surface of the check valve dart is worn noticeably, replace the dart to avoid air leakage. Inspect the check valve seat area for wear and discard if it's pitted or scored. Replace the spring if it's worn, rusty or has come off. Look for any nicks, burrs or galling on the air distributor and polish if necessary. Damages on the O-ring are vital for future function. So are also any evidence of movement, microsliding in the taper lock area. Replace the air distributor if there are any cracks. Having checked all parts thoroughly and replaced them as necessary, including a new set of O-rings, make sure that you have a clean working area, all parts thoroughly clean, free from burrs or sharp edges, and liberally coated. If the piston retaining ring has been removed, reinsert it. Then insert the guide sleeve. Insert the piston into the bore with the large diameter first, far enough so that the piston stabilises. Put the air distributor into the inner cylinder. Slide the inner cylinder over the small diameter of the piston, then push the assembly into the bore. 
The inner cylinder should slide as far as its shoulder. If it doesn't, give it a few taps with a soft drift. Fit the makeup ring with the small diameter downwards. Fit the check valve spring and the check valve dart. First, fit the tops up without thread grease to check the standoff. If there's no gap, it's likely that a part is missing. If there is sufficient standoff, remove the tops up, apply thread grease and reinstall it. Slide the driver sub over the bit shank. Now fit the bit retaining ring and O-ring and grease the threads before installing the driver sub into the hammer's bottom end. Make sure there is a gap between the driver sub and the piston case. Correct storage is essential. Protecting the threads and storing the hammer in a dry place are vital. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of how to service and overhaul the RH460 DTH hammer. It is now ready to be put back to hard work. Let me just repeat some of the most important things to remember. If you have any doubts about whether or not a part is damaged, it is always better to replace it with a new part rather than taking a risk and putting it back into the hammer. Also, make sure that you take good care of the parts. Clean them properly and always use plenty of oil and thread grease. If you have any more questions about how to service and maintain the RH460, you'll probably find the answers to them in the operator's manual. If not, you are most welcome to contact your nearest Sandvik representative for further assistance. Thank you for choosing the RH460 Hammer.